Ask expectant parents if they want a boy or girl, and you'll probably get a typical answer. It doesn't matter as long as he or she is healthy. So the diagnosis of a congenital heart defect in a newborn is something no parent wants to hear. There are multiple different anatomical defects, from simple defects where there's just a simple hole, to more complex defects where the heart can be in the wrong side of the chest, where the uh, arteries and veins that come off the heart can be misdirected. In the past, open heart surgery was the only option for these children. And the outlook for survival was bleak. 30 years ago, the assumption was that these children would never make it to adult life. Now today, the, the estimates are that 90% of these children survive to adulthood and lead relatively normal lives. That's due to major advancements in cardiovascular surgical techniques. Take, for example, the heart defect known as a septal defect. This is a condition where there's a hole in the wall of the septum, the wall that divides the right and left sides of the heart. An atrial septal defect affects the upper two chambers. A ventricular septal defect affects the lower chambers. Either problem can cause the blood to circulate improperly, triggering the heart to work harder than it should. 20 years ago, it required uh, a large operation with an incision down the center of the chest, and the hole was essentially closed surgically. Now today, it can be done in a procedure that can be done within a few hours. Here's the medical marvel that makes it all possible. The septal occluder. The common name for them is called the clamshell device, where essentially a device is placed over the hole, and just like a clamshell, closes the hole. Instead of having a full open operation, um, these de devices can be implanted through catheters placed via the arteries and veins in the groin. It's a dramatic improvement in the way these things are treated. In many cases, the more severe heart defects are diagnosed during childhood. Occasionally, defects go unnoticed until adulthood or until they pose a serious health threat. One local doctor has seen that firsthand, not in a patient, but in his own heart. I didn't know that I had this hole until my first day of cardiology fellowship when we were learning how to use the ultrasound machines and uh, our professor performed the ultrasound on me and we discovered that I had an atrial septal defect. Dr. Shikovsky's heart defect was diagnosed about the time the clinical trials for the septal occluder were wrapping up. Once the results were in, the decision to plug the hole and start the healing was easy. The procedure took approximately an hour or so when they finally did it, and I was home the next day. What happens after, you, uh, after it's implanted, the natural cells that line the heart grow over the device and it just becomes part of your heart wall. And uh, I've been fine ever since. Other dramatic advances are now being applied in the area of heart valve abnormalities. In some cases, the heart valves don't close normally. In others, they're blocked once again causing problems with blood flow. These defects can either be repaired or in some cases replaced altogether. Unfortunately, there are many other heart defects that can be present in a child at birth. The good news for parents is that most of these problems can be corrected early and easily. If the operation is done before there is significant dysfunction of the heart, if the heart remains strong, then their prognosis is, continues to improve. What I see for the future of cardiology is the number of patients who have heart disease will be living much, much, much longer. I'm excited about the future, tremendously excited. And that from a doctor who can speak about the subject directly from the heart. For Smart Medicine, I'm Rod Starnes. Joining me now is cardiologist Dr. Stephen Gubin. Dr. Gubin, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. Tell me what mitral valve prolapse is. Mitral valve prolapse is the most common heart valve abnormality in the United States. The mitral valve prolapse occurs when the mitral valve, which is the valve located between the left upper chamber and the left lower chamber, does not function properly. The mitral valve has two leaflets that open and shut as blood flows from the left upper chamber to the left lower chamber. Uh, mitral valve prolapse occurs when the mitral valve actually backs up into the left upper chamber during contraction of the left lower chamber. It usually doesn't occur until, um, occur until like the teens, 
Um, usually, like in the 20s or 30s, uh, people first notice the symptoms of mitral valve prolapse. What are those symptoms? The um, majority of patients with mitral valve prolapse don't have any symptoms. But the most common symptoms associated with mitral valve prolapse are chest pain, shortness of breath, palpitations, fatigue, dizziness, maybe even a panic attacks. How is it treated? The be most of the patients that have mitral valve prolapse don't need to be treated. Um, the most common forms of treatment are hydration, make sure that you're well hydrated. If um, one has palpitations, chest pain, sometimes beta blockers such as atenolol or metoprolol are very helpful. If one has mitral valve prolapse where the valve actually leaks or where blood flow flows back into the left atrium, they need to be sure to take antibiotic prophylaxis prior to dental or surgical procedures. In a few patients that have significant uh, mitral regurgitation, they may at uh, one time uh, in their life need surgery. Dr. Gubin, thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome.